Hello, welcome to Ludic Science. This is part two of the Stirling engine build. In this video, we will assemble all the parts that we made in the previous video and see how the engine performs. This video is sponsored by GLC PCB. GLC PCB is a company that makes excellent quality PCBs at an unbeatable price. You can order boards online in minutes. After registration, upload your Gerber files, select the PCB properties, select the payment method and place your order. Best price and quality for all your PCB needs. We have the main components, the displacer cylinder, power piston and the flywheel. And now we have to assemble everything on a wooden base. The first step is to put a small axis on the flywheel in order to couple it to the displacer cylinder. Since the maximum displacement is of around 36 millimeters, we will drill a hole at 18 millimeters from the center. So when the flywheel rotates, it will generate a circumference of 36 millimeters. The flywheel goes here. I placed a plastic tube that serves as a bushing and also as a stop. The flywheel is in place and now I will install the displacer cylinder. I attached the cylinder to this piece of wood using plastic ties. The displacer cylinder is installed and joined to the flywheel. There is a piece of wire between the axis of the displacer cylinder and the flywheel. And at the ends I have these pieces of plastic tube that are from a common pen. And here I also have another piece of tube glued to the wire that acts as a stop to prevent the other tube from coming out. And these joining pieces are from a terminal block that you can get from an electronics store. They are at the inside. You need to, to cut the plastic. And it works pretty well. Now we need to install the power piston that receives the changes in pressure from the displacer cylinder and it's also joined to the axis of the flywheel. The connection of the power piston to the flywheel axis is of the same type as that of the displacer piston. The piston has a good seal, which we can verify by blocking the air intake. So it only remains to connect the hose that comes from the displacer piston. The engine is complete and one thing that is important to mention is the timing of the engine. The displacer piston must always be 90 degrees ahead of the power piston. This engine runs in this direction, clockwise. So when the axis of the displacer piston is, for example, at 3 o'clock, the axis of the power piston must be at 12. That is, it must be up. This is necessary for the start the stirling cycle. Okay, so it's now time to test 
four engine. As you could see, the engine works well and it works slowly. It is nice to see it work at slow RPM and it also has this sound like an old engine, which is nice. However, it also implies that the performance is low. The efficiency must be low. So there are a few changes that I want to try in order to improve the efficiency, in particular to reduce the length of movement of the displacer piston by changing the radius of this pin and also try to use a power piston, power cylinder with a large volume because as it is now I think it's too small compared to the volume of the displacer cylinder. I will be making these changes and report back in another video. Okay, that's all for today. I hope you liked the video. If you want, you want to try to build one. Thanks for your visit and see you in the next video.